this this screams to me of attention seeking and publicity and the fact that manchester united share price has fallen by eight percent today and it was already was starting to fall before the announcement was made um if, if i wanted to make a name for myself i'd associate myself with a famous brand and, and a brand takeover and, and that's that's what we have here as soon as you start to unpick the uh the comments made by this prospective owner saying if every manchester united fan contributed five bucks six bucks whatever it's going to be then uh there's the deal can go through but then he started saying at today's at today's market price well, the glazers are looking for far more than today's market price so he's either not done his homework or he doesn't understand finance so i, I was a little bit reserved with regards to that and then his comments along the lines of um the club shouldn't be in the hands of uh, an oligarch or an ultra high net worth individual or a sovereign wealth fund now there is a there's a moral and ethical viewpoint that says well perhaps that that does have some merit other repeat but if you talk to chelsea or manchester city fans they go well we quite like being owned by an oligarch. We quite like being owned effectively by an ultra high net worth individual. So, so I, I didn't, I don't see, um, I don't see objections from from those which are following the, the effective sugar daddy model. Um, and then he says, "Oh, I'm, I'm I'm going to have an app, and if you own a share, you'll be able to vote using the app." And that's when I really started to question the logic. Because the whole point about running any business is that it should be run professionally. And um, I'm fortunate or unfortunate enough, to, uh, depending upon your viewpoint, that um, I, I teach here in the UK for something called the League Managers Association. So I, I get to teach professional football managers and I'm working with the PFA, the Professional Footballers Association. So I get to teach professional footballers. And what I find is the more I listen to them, the less, the, the more I realize just how little I know about football. Because at an elite at level, the language that they use, and it, this is the same regardless of the industry in which you come, there's an awful lot of jargon, there's an awful lot of assumed knowledge. And therefore, for somebody to say, I'm going to let people who, because they own one share in Manchester United, contribute towards um, populism. And, they, and this is what it will be. It will be Manchester United has 165 million shares. So therefore, if half of them are going to be owned by the fans, that means that there's 82 million shares, 82 million votes, whatever it's going to be. Um, and we've seen with Barcelona what happens when you get somebody coming into a club, when you've got a fan-owned club, and they go down the, the populist route, it means that people do what, what, they, what they want to see. So fans want to see lots of money spent on players, regardless of whether the club has the money to spend it. And you end up in the position that we've seen at Barcelona, where the club has effectively had to take out long-term payday loans to make short-term financing decisions. And, and that's, that's a very poor way of running any business. Um, so the, the more that I read about the proposals, the, the less convinced that I became that this was a serious bid. Um, and it certainly is a way for, for getting my face onto the BBC website. It gets my, names, gets my name trending on Twitter. And it's fantastic free publicity. But is it a credible bid? I don't think so.